Brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to our second Epiphany hymn sing. Tonight we continue uh, going through the hymns of Epiphany, which literally means this word Epiphany to show forth or to be made manifest. And we trust in the season of Epiphany and also throughout the year, that the love of God has been made manifest through Jesus for all people, not just Jews, but also the Gentiles, and for you. His love has been made manifest in the waters of holy baptism. So in our baptisms, we begin today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the terms that we maybe would use in the church occasionally is the idea of this messianic age. Uh, that once the Son of God has been made king and placed on his throne and is king of all creation, we'd refer to that as the messianic age. Our, our first hymn today talks a little bit about this, and I just want to point this out. Our first hymn is Hail to the Lord's Anointed, and it talks about in verse 1 that we're going to sing the dawn or even the history of the Messianic age. The, the hymn writer refers back to the promise to King David that one of his offspring would sit on his throne forever. In stanza two, we hear about the character of this messianic age, not just its promises, but when this king comes, Jesus, here's what it's going to look like. He's going to come with rescue to those who are oppressed, the poor, the needy, the weak, give them songs and turn their darkness into light. That's what it's going to look like when the king is made manifest for all people. And finally, as we sing tonight in stanza five, is the eternal character of the messianic age over every foe victorious he on his throne shall rest from age to age more glorious all blessing and all blessed that this time will never end in which jesus sits on the throne we recognize that now and we trust it that no matter what we see around us even if it seems to be darkness the light is present and jesus reigns over all things over all time and over all space so as we look to him, as we begin our hymn sing, uh, may his light bring joy into your darkness as we sing together hymn 398, Hail to the Lord's Anointed.
I'm guessing some of you have been in a cave before. Uh, maybe you've taken a tour of some of the caves around in the, in the Midwest, and sometimes when you're in a cave, what they'll do, and it, it always works, and it's always funny, is they'll make sure everyone has their cell phones in their pocket, and you're down in the bottom of the cave, and they'll turn off all the lights, and you literally can't see a thing. In the midst of that darkness, there is no light to give even the trace, the hint of sight. Our next hymn, especially in verse 1, uh, is a prayer for illumination, that the light of Jesus would shine on us. And it refers to it both in terms of the, the star that led the Magi to wise men. It also has hints of Revelation chapter 22, Jesus who is the bright morning star. And we pray for illumination, that we would see things the way God sees them. I think most of the time when we talk about faith, it's not just what we think, but it's how we see. That we'd be illuminated in the light of Jesus. We would see things as they truly are. Redeemed, restored, resurrected on earth as in heaven. So as we sing, may the Lord give us illumination. Now and every day of our lives as we live within his kingdom. We sing together him 400, brightest and best of the stars of the morning. Our next hymn as we continue to celebrate Epiphany is number 401, From God the Father, Virgin Born. For these hymn sings, I think one of the most fun parts for me, and I hope for you, is having the opportunity to learn more about the composers of our hymns. And for this one, I, I wish I could tell you a whole lot about the composer, but I actually can't tell you anything. This is an anonymous hymn. And it dates as far back as the 11th century. It was originally written in Latin. And something interesting about that Latin hymn was that it was an alphabetical hymn. I can't think of any of these in English. But the first letter of each line in Latin begins with a successive letter of the Latin alphabet. And in this beautiful and creative epiphany hymn, 
We sing of the creator revealing himself to his creation in his son, Jesus Christ. And this is a beautiful epiphany theme, and that makes this a beautiful epiphany hymn. But this is also a hymn that is appropriate for a baptism. Because at epiphany, God reveals himself to us. That's what we celebrate. And just in the same way, when we combine water and the word, God reveals himself to us, giving us the gift of faith. So this evening, we join together with saints on earth and all, uh, excuse me, we join together with saints on earth and those saints around the throne praising Jesus, who is from God the Father, virgin born. Our final hymn this evening is number 402, The Only Son from Heaven. This hymn was written by Elizabeth Cruciger in 1524, and Elizabeth became a, a nun in eastern Pomerania at a young age. But if you noticed anything about the year, and if you noticed anything about the place in the world, you might remember that there was something pretty exciting going on just down the road. It was the Reformation. And Cruciger left the abbey in 1522, and she moved to Wittenberg. And there, at Wittenberg, she became close friends with many of the reformers, names you might recognize, like Johannes Bugenhagen. She even married the reformer, Caspar Cruciger, that's her last name. And their daughter would go on to marry Martin Luther's son, Hans. Cruciger was the only female hymn writer in Martin Luther's immediate circle, and Martin Luther wrote often about the need for more hymns in the church at the time. For starters, there just weren't that many hymns at the time, and the ones that were out there, many, uh, many of those Luther saw as lacking theologically. So Luther encouraged his friends to write good hymns, and write they did. And this is one of the best equally rich in theology and in imagery. In almost every line, Cruciger presents Jesus, our, our morning star, in a new and beautiful way. Throughout the hymn, we are praying to Jesus for our earthly needs. And by the end of the hymn, in its doxology, we find ourselves around the throne praying with the angels. So today, let's join our voices singing the only Son from heaven.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are our bright and morning star. Continue to guide and to lead us, Lord Christ, and to redeem us, drawing us ever closer to you. In your name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.